Hey everyone, it's Nalani, Diabetes PA. Um, thanks for joining me again. Today I wanna talk to you about carb counting. I thought it'd be fitting because it's my birthday week, so there's been a lot of carbs and a lot of sugar and yummy treats, so the only reason I've been able to eat these treats, like this cake that I have right here, is because of carb counting, so I thought it'd be a good teaching opportunity. So carb counting is super, super important, and I really try to get all of my patients carb counting who are dosing with both long-acting and prandial insulin or are on an insulin pump. Carb counting is the key to a good, healthy, proactive life as a diabetic. So there are other methods like the sliding scale method or set dosage method, but those really promote reacting to poor blood sugars. Um, whereas carb counting promotes being proactive, which is what we need to start doing um, with our diabetes in order to be healthy. You wanna be proactive, prevent bad blood sugars from happening in the first place instead of correcting them after they've already happened. So how do we be proactive with carb counting? Um, yes, it's extra work, but it's really, really worth it once you get it down um, because it allows us to quantify how much uh, carbs are gonna raise our blood sugar. So most people who take long and rapid acting insulin uh, do the best on kind of a 50-50 balance. So if you think about it, you're taking 50% of your insulin as long acting and 50% as rapid acting. And all that rapid acting is used to cover the food that we eat. So if you think about it, that means that 50% of our blood sugar control is based on the rapid acting insulin. So if, if you're doing it the right way, you can have really good control. But if you're doing it the wrong way, then you're in trouble. So most of the carbohydrates we eat turn into glucose and that's what raises our blood sugar. So counting carbs is a useful tool in determining how high our blood sugar will be raised by carbs. <clears throat> so how do we know our carb factor? Usually this is determined by your clinician, um, but I really promote people knowing why clinicians are making changes to their regimen. So I think it's important for you guys to understand how we as clinicians calculate your carb factors. And the way I do it is uh, by using the 500 rule, which basically means you divide your total daily dose, I'm sorry, you divide 500 by your total daily dose. So the total daily dose is your basal plus your rapid acting insulin. So say for instance, your total daily dose is 25 units a day. What I would do is say 500 divided by 25 and that comes out to, or, I'm sorry, um, yeah, 500 divided by 25 would come out to 20. So your carb factor would be 20 and that means that one unit of insulin would cover 20 grams of carbs. But the carb factors can vary for everyone as you might guess because the total, total daily dose varies for everyone. So someone who takes you know, 100 units a day, their carb factor would just be five. So uh, like I said, it can really vary. So that's why you need to work with your clinician. Um, so keep in mind that the carb, the 500 rule isn't perfect and it will need, and your carb factor will need to be titrated, but it's a really good place to start. And then what we do is we test the carb factor. And so the way to test the carb factor is by starting your blood sugar at goal um, when you haven't eaten for four hours. Then what you're gonna do is divide the total grams of carbs in your meal by your carb factor, and then take your insulin. You wanna wait 15 to 20 minutes and then eat. Then you wanna check your blood sugar hourly. You will know you have an accurate carb factor if your blood sugar is within 40 of your original blood glucose two hours after your meal and within 30 of your original blood glucose four hours after your meal. So if your carb factor passes this test, then that's awesome. 
If your blood sugar ends up higher than the targets, then you wanna strengthen your carb ratio. And you strengthen the carb ratio by going down. So if your carb ratio is 10, you would, de you would decrease it to nine and that would strengthen it. If your blood sugar is lower than the targets, then you would weaken your carb ratio. So if it was 10, you would take it to 11 and then you would retest it. Okay, so remember, although carb counting presents some challenges and it's difficult at first, most people will notice that they tend to eat the same about 20 foods or so um, all, all the time just in rotation. So once you get things memorized, it's actually a much easier way of dosing and it's really beneficial because it will help stabilize your blood sugars and allow you for more freedom in your diet. So if you think about it, um, the, if you think about the importance of optimal blood sugar control and quality of life, then it's worth learning how to carb count. So, and remember it's important to be proactive with your control. Anyway, so I hope you learned something today and I'm gonna enjoy my cake that I already gave myself insulin for. Um, have a great weekend. Bye guys.